thing about money is there actually is a fairly well accepted definition of what money is. The question is, as you apply that definition to particular things that, are, that people claim to be money, do they fit the definition? Well, just take the paper dollar, for example. How well does it perform those functions? Well, store of value. Uh, the dollar has lost 95% of its purchasing power uh, since the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. So, not very good as a store of value. One of the things I do is uh, just a way to get the audience's attention is I have a slide and there are three pictures on the slide. One is a pile of Monopoly money. The other one is a pile of Federal Reserve notes, uh, what Americans would call paper money. Uh, and the other one is a solid gold uh, American Eagle uh, one ounce coin. And the title of the slide is which of these is not like the other and if you know the show Sesame Street or you have children who watch it, it's one of the favorite vignettes in Sesame Street and what it really is is a kind of IQ test for five-year-olds. They're supposed to look at the three things and look at characteristics and find the one that's not like the other. Well, I've shown this slide to um, groups of you know, Ivy League University professors and I've also shown it to uh, you know, uh, children you know, kind of five years old, my nieces and nephews and so forth. Uh, and when the uh, professors look at it, they say, well, um, clearly the, uh, the dollars are not like the others because gold has no role as money and monopoly money is junk and the American dollar is a store of value, so that's not like the other. But the children look at it and they say, well, the gold coin is not like the other because the other two are just piles of paper and the gold coin is clearly something different. So my question to the audience is, who's smarter, a five-year-old or an Ivy League professor?